Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Today I am here to share something with you that I've always wanted to share with you one day, um, but under my own circumstances. And it looks like that chance has been taken away from me. So today I am taking back my own power. YouTube, it's both a great and a horrible place. It can bring the best out of people while also bringing out the worst in them. One thing that I've seen YouTube as a platform for though, is coming out videos, which for the very few of you who have no idea what that is, it's basically a video that contains the contents of a specific person going onto their platform and announcing that they're LGBTQ+. It's a very wholesome thing to watch go down, and I'll admit, it's always nice reading through comment sections and seeing the amount of support that specific creator gets for coming out. It's almost like this one video not only brings their entire community together, but for some of the people watching it, brings a sense of relatability or could have possibly even inspired someone to come out themselves which for many is a very anxiety driven thing to do. Now whenever I stream I always get the same bunch of questions. What do you identify as? What are your pronouns? And what is your sexuality? I always tend to answer them with I don't know or you'll find out one day. Not to be some cryptic weirdo online even though it does come off that way, but just as a kind way of giving whoever is asking the question a response so they don't feel ignored while also obtaining my privacy. Because I want my life to be private, for the most part. The only part of me that is initially public is my personality of sorts and my thoughts on certain topics. This isn't me saying that I don't like those type of questions though. I can understand where a large majority of you are coming from. People just want to get to know whoever they're watching, sometimes to build a more personal connection or just out of curiosity. And I don't blame anyone for wanting to do that. I just rather keep the majority of who I am private. But for those who are curious, I will tell you in this video as it seems pretty fitting to the topic. So hi. I'm not entirely sure what my sexuality is to be perfectly honest. I used to label myself as bisexual, then gay, but now I don't really like using labels, not because they're bad. If you want to call yourself whatever, do so as you please. I just don't give myself a label because I can't control how I feel. I just fall into relationships with whoever I fall into with, though for the most part I'm mostly attracted to men. This video isn't about me though. With today's video I want to discuss something in a more positive light, especially since my last video was about some Something that for me at least was quite depressing. Now there will be some things that clearly will be a bit upsetting to hear, more in a way that will make you sympathize with the person we're discussing today, who happens to be Nikki Tutorials. So who is Nikki Tutorials? Well, she's a makeup artist, and her first video being, well, surprise, a makeup tutorial. It's a fairly basic tutorial. Of course, this doesn't diminish the fact that she already had quite the talent for it at the time, though this was only the start for what was about to come. Some of you may also know Nikki from a few of her collaborations, some with her more personal family like her mom or some from people like James Charles. Though in 2015 she had uploaded a video which was the start of a series titled The Power of Makeup. This series was quite big and turned into a challenge for some YouTubers to make videos on, one being Graveyard Girl, where she did her own video recreating the same thing. Now while might some see this series as a way to see how makeup can make others look better or even inhuman at times, I believe it represents a deeper message, something more positive than negative. See on the ground level, the video visually shows you a representation of how Nikki looks before and after she applies her makeup, but if you're to listen to what she's actually trying to say, she's stating she believes that makeup is more than something to make people beautiful or to cover up parts of yourself that you don't like. Hey guys, I'm here today to show you the power of makeup. I've been noticing a lot lately that girls have been almost ashamed 
to say that they love makeup. Because nowadays, when you say you love makeup, you either do it because you wanna look good for boys, you do it because you're insecure, or you do it because you don't love yourself. She felt that many people were afraid to share their love for makeup because of the stigma around it, and because a lot of people would view it as a tool that covers up insecurities. But it's so much more than that. Makeup can be used for its artistic value. Not only that, it can be used as a way to express yourself. This is what I feel like this entire series represented. The power of makeup isn't to show you how much more beautiful a person is by applying products to their face, it's to show you the art history behind it. I will also say that my favorite video of hers is probably the one where she transforms herself into a Wii character, not for the makeup, but rather for the epic beat she spits out. <laughs> Ah, the voice of an absolute angel. At the beginning of this year though, Nikki had gained quite a bit of attention, not just by those on YouTube, but on the media as well. This is because Nikki had made a video disclosing something more private and serious. It got so big as well that at one point, she was the number one trending topic in her country, which is the Netherlands for those who don't know. So let's have a chat about the video. Hello guys, it's me, Nikki. Hello. I woke up one day and, as always, I decided to turn on my phone. I scrolled through Twitter, only to receive a DM from someone telling me that this Nikki Tutorials person was being blackmailed and it's a whole crazy situation. Now the first thought that came to me was, who is Nikki Tutorials? I never watched her before and never even heard of her. I know, I live under a rock, I'm sorry. But then a second question came to mind. What was this Nikki Tutorials person being blackmailed for? Well, what came as a surprise to me was Nikki's video was titled, I'm Coming Out, which already gave me a strong idea as to what she was being blackmailed for. And of course, I was right. In this video, Nikki had described how someone out there was threatening to leak the information regarding the fact that she is transgender. So instead of letting some random nimrod on the internet leak it, she took matters into her own hands. Hello guys, it's me, Nikki. Hello. Today I am here to share something with you that I've always wanted to share with you one day. Um but under my own circumstances. And it looks like that chance has been taken away from me. So today I am taking back my own power and uh, I have to tell you something. Planet Earth is full of labels and I never felt comfortable with labels. I wanted to be my own person, my own identity, my own human being without any rules, without any labels and without any restrictions. It is a brand new year. It is 2020 and I want to start the year off with the truth. I want to start the year off by finally revealing a part of my life that has made me who I am. I want to talk about a part of myself that makes me, me. I can't believe I'm saying this today to all of you for the entire world to see but damn, it feels good to finally do it. It is time to let go and be truly free. When I was younger, I was born in the wrong body, which means that I am transgender. I have been blackmailed by people that wanted to leak my story to the press. Now besides that part, the video altogether was actually somewhat wholesome and heartwarming to watch. She would go on to talk about how she always had support from her mom and even from the age of seven to eight, she completely only wore girl clothing and then even decided to grow out her hair. Basically throughout the entirety of her youth, she was a girl and got to live the life she wanted to. Always thought that I was a girl and I just couldn't understand why, why I had short hair, why I had to wear trousers and a t-shirt and like, why couldn't I wear dresses? And I played with dolls. I did everything with, with nail polish, with, with hair brushes, with fake hair, with Barbie dolls. Like all of me was girly. My mom knew immediately that um, I either was gonna be gay or a different type of story. And it turned out to be a different type of story. Growing up, I think the number one thing I'm the most thankful for is my mom. <laughs> Love you, mom, <laughs> because she has been there for me since day one. She has always supported me. She was doing hormones when she was 14, then by the time she was 19, she was fully transitioned. Most importantly though, she's proud of herself and her story. 
yes. Um, I got fully transitioned by the time I was 14. I got my hormones because I'm a tall bitch and I kept on growing and they were like, let's tone that down. I got growth stoppers because I was supposed to be a whole lot taller than I already am today. Um, so they stopped my growth and they gave me hormones. And by the time I was 19, I fully transitioned. I transitioned while on YouTube. And saying that right now sounds so crazy to me because I have literally grown up and transformed into me. Now besides all this, many of you are probably wondering as to why she'd hide something like this from her audience. Well, she answered this pretty briefly, but of course I will go more in depth later on. Though her reasoning for this was simply because she was concerned that she would have lost the trust of her audience, and well, it took her over 11 years to build up the audience she has. Which is understandable, that can put quite a lot of pressure on someone. She's still herself at the end of the day nonetheless, but some people might have felt betrayed in a way, that they might have felt lied to even. Which is a massive reason as to why she felt a little pushed back from telling everyone about this. The number one thing that I'm concerned about sharing this with you today is, first of all, oh my god, this feels so liberating, you have no idea that for 11 years that I've had my channel, this has been with me. And I always wanted to share this with you, but I cannot believe that after today, the world will know. But there's one thing that I really, really wanna make so clear to all of you. I am me. I am still Nikki. Nothing changes about that. The last thing I want in my life is for you to not trust me anymore or to look at me with different eyes or look at me in a different manner or think that I have changed. I have changed in a bit because damn, this feels liberating and freeing, but I, at the end of the day, am still Nikki and nothing changes about that. The number one thing on my channel is my love for makeup and the reason why the trans part of me never got to the light was because I wanted my channel to be about my art. I wanted my art to do the speaking for me. She doesn't want to let anyone down, as most creators probably feel the same. The idea of having your entire audience turn against you can be very frightening, as witnessed in the past with certain situations. Thankfully though, the community didn't turn against her and actually praised her for doing this. Not only did other large creators support her for coming out with this video, but so did many news outlets, which led her to become the number one trending topic in her own country. Heck, she was even on the Ellen show, though Nikki then later on went to speak about how Ellen had treated her fairly oddly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, ik zeg dat er een groot verschil is tussen uh, de wereld uit door en Ellen. <laughs> en dan uh, geef ik jullie het positieve handje. Want? Oh, punt. Nou, dat wil ik meer weten. Ja, ja, er zijn bepaalde... Kijk, bijvoorbeeld, het is wel heel leuk dat jij wel vooraf hallo komt zeggen en zo. Hier. Het is bij Ellen in ieder geval, het is wat ik heb meegemaakt hier en uh, andere landen, is dat gewoon een hele andere wereld. Het zit gewoon iets anders. Afstandelijke killer... Uh... Tikje. <laughs> Het is wel echt dat ik zo'n podium mocht betreden, is natuurlijk de grootste eer, laat ik dat voorop stellen. Maar het is wel een andere wereld, Eurovisie. Quickly after the video's release, and after all the praise it had received, people had started becoming suspicious of many other people, trying to figure out who this blackmailer was, because people were upset and wanted justice for Nikki. So they did find someone who was quite suspicious, someone known as Lisa Blandino, who happens to be the sister of Jared Blandino, the founder of Two Faced Cosmetics. See, Lisa, for whatever reason, decided to post something fairly bold, as some people might call it, in their bio. Transgender, huh? That's not the only thing she's lying about. Which is quite the statement to make, both trying to discredit Nikki's video and throwing out the idea that Nikki has spread lies about numerous other things. What are these lies? Well, nobody knows. I guess Lisa didn't actually have any ammo that they may have seemingly claimed to have. She then later changed her bio to, let's be clear, I love trans people and dislike anyone who lies to her others, period. But anyway, if you came from a lying DC, then who cares? This wasn't without punishment for Lisa either though, as her brother then decided to fire her from the company and even release a statement apologizing. But a lot of people actually started to believe that she wasn't actually 
actually fired and had a feeling that this was just a way to rub off some dirt that Lisa had brought over to the company. Which, well, is a fairly understandable conspiracy to have, I suppose, as most wouldn't expect someone's own brother to do that to them. So it's only reasonable to think that they would have lied to make themselves look better. Might I even add though, I found this to be a bit shocking as well because after seeing this go down, I went back through some of Nikki's videos only to find out she's promoted the company in the past. Not only that, the company had made a palette with Nikki that was even named after her own series, The Power of Makeup. So for Lisa to do something like this to Nikki was a little strange. Or was it? As said before, Nikki had made a palette with the company. Now for those for whatever reason who don't know what a palette is, it's basically makeup mumbo jumbo. That's really all you need to know about it. It's it's a makeup product. But this palette was received really poorly, and a lot of people lost trust for Nikki at this time. Because, well, the palette sucked. Now Nikki didn't just lose her audience's trust simply because she promoted the palette under her name, but also because she uploaded a video showing off the palette where the quality was significantly different and of a much higher quality than the ones that were actually sold. It's kind of like walking into a restaurant and seeing the pictures of the food on the menu and how good they look, but when you actually get the food, it's super messy and disgusting. It was basically like that. Which, you know, it's one thing for a $5 burger to be like that, but it's an entirely different thing for a super expensive palette to be like that. So of course people had every right to be upset at this time, and to even perceive it as a scam even. When jumping forward a bit though, all the hate kind of shifts away from both Nikki and Too Faced to only Too Faced. This all started because Jeffree Star had decided to post a couple of tweets out of frustration explaining that Too Faced was shady with Nikki's contract regarding the palettes, which he eventually did add more information regarding that information in the one and only Shane Dawson docu-series, where he had told Shane that Nikki only made $50,000 from the palette, while Too Faced made well over $10 million. Which, if you can't do the math, that means she made less than 1% of all the earnings. Um, but she accepted a deal. Let's start with what I'm most excited for, my palette. Um, where they gave her a flat fee of 50000 and that was it. She made no money from the palettes. Um, the brand went on to sell over $10 million of product. Um, and probably more than that, and she got just a little flat fee and some dirt. This was looked up upon weirdly as well, because normally a collaboration like this would be of a higher percentage, which is closer to 20% to 30%. Because of this though, Nikki decided to make her own statements on the situation, where she explains that it's her fault for signing the contract and not making as much as she should have because she was naive at the time. But, and I mean a massive but, she also explains how Two-Faced purposely changed the quality of the palettes without her even knowing, which would explain why the one she used in her video was of a much higher quality versus the ones that were actually sold. This was really bad for Too Faced and would cause a lot of beauty gurus to stop any future reviews of their products, stop them from signing with them, and even have a lot of drama channels just pound into them. It was not looking good for them. Internet reputation wise, that is, their channel is pretty dead and they constantly lose subscribers. I know that it doesn't sound that bad because they're a huge company that's owned by Estee Lauder companies or however you say it. Believe it or not though, marketing on YouTube and through YouTube YouTubers or other place on the internet is actually very important for most companies nowadays. That's because, well, everyone uses it, and not only that, the most influential and impressionable people use it. So if you have the ability to advertise your product through, let's say, Nikki tutorials, you're going to reach a lot of people. And a lot of people who look up to Nikki and will most likely take her word for whatever it is she's saying, if Nikki says, yes, this palette is great and it's made by me, so you should buy it, it has a better chance of selling than if you went outside and saw a billboard with the same product on it. So for Too Faced's reputation and trust with their customers to just be pushed under a bus and crushed like it was all over the internet can actually be fairly damaging to how they're both able to market their products and their overall sales from the products being sold. Which I'm gonna make a little conspiracy, it's not 100%, mostly saying that so I don't get sued, but I believe Lisa Blandino held a grudge 
grudge against Nikki for coming out with this information about the company. So when she saw Nikki release her coming out video, she decided to spread false information and make it seem like Nikki was lying about being transgender and numerous other things. Not entirely sure on that, just a little conspiracy running off a lot of the circumstantial evidence. Because it would make sense for Lisa, someone who was a part of the company at the time, to have a strong disliking of Nikki. Though I will say I fully side with Nikki on this one, going behind someone's back and outright changing the quality of the product that they're promoting to be the super high quality awesome palette is putting that person's career in danger, or more or less their credibility. This is because an audience's trust is one of the most important things to have, especially when you're somebody who recommends and even reviews products. Something that does need to be asked though, would all of this also make you think that Lisa was the one that blackmailed Nikki? Because that is an understandable question to be asked, and as said before, was asked. A lot of people were trying to find out who blackmailed Nikki, and everyone started to point fingers at Lisa after what she put in her Instagram bio. This was not the right way of going about things though, as Nikki didn't like this behavior from both the people pointing fingers at other people and from Lisa. In this video, I want to clear up some questions that I've been seeing going around over the past few weeks, and I live. Nikki had come out with a video, in better terms, a response video. She goes on to talk about her experience after she released her coming out video, like how she went on the Ellen show, how she's grateful for all the support she got after the coming out video, or even how after she uploaded her video, she experienced one of the most anxious times in her life. When I uploaded my video, I, I literally did not know what to expect. That night of me uploading the video, I was the most anxious, the most nervous, the most stressed I've ever been in my life. Like the feelings that went through my body, I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. Not that I have, well, I have an enemy now, clearly. <laughs> One thing I want to focus on right now though, is how Nikki brings up her disliking with people trying to figure out who her blackmailer is. She explains how she wants this witch hunt to stop because of two important key factors. One is that it's for her to know and for her to decide whether or not how this person should be handled. And the other is the fact that it's dangerous to go around pointing fingers at people because nobody except Nikki really knows who this person is. Let's talk about the blackmailing. First of all, I think we need to stop the witch hunt that I've been seeing going around. I've been seeing so many truth videos out there saying, oh my God, this is Nikki's blackmailer. Oh my God, we found the guy. Oh my God, we found the girl. This and this person are Nikki's blackmailers. And to be honest, I don't think that is your story to tell. If anyone's gonna have the right to tell more about these blackmailers, it's gonna be me. How I deal with the situation and what information I would like to share at the end of the day is my story. No other person or media outlet should be the one talking about my blackmailer when they only know half of the truth. You are destroying people's lives that aren't even involved in this. She even went on to describe that when she found out, it wasn't even a person she knew. With the help of police, we have found out who exactly was blackmailing me. I have their names, their phone numbers, email addresses. I even know where they live and how they treated people around me to get more information on my true story. And let me tell you, when I found out exactly who was behind this all, I was shocked because this is not a person that any of you know. It is someone that I don't even personally know. With all honesty, there's a point to be made there. It's within good intent for the people trying to figure out who this person is because they simply just want justice for Nikki. But by going off assumptions like this and for example saying, oh well, Lisa Blandino put this in their bio, puts Lisa in jeopardy while for all we know, she could be innocent, which by Nikki's wording, the person who it was is somebody she didn't even know. So unless she's lying, it for sure wasn't Lisa. This doesn't justify the behavior that's place, but it creates a false narrative and with all due, more harm could have been done if people decided to double down and go with the observation that it is Lisa. Even though it most likely, and just going with what Nikki said, most indefinitely isn't. I'll also take notice of the fact that a few others were also suspected to be Nikki's blackmailer as well, Jeffree Star oddly being one of them. I mean, it doesn't seem out of his character, but Nikki is
is a connection to Jeffrey. Furthermore, it makes no sense that Jeffrey would do this because Jeffrey decided to defend Nikki as well with the whole Two Face scandal not so long ago before all of this. Another person also being a Netherlands content creator like Nikki herself, known as Giami. This information left me incredibly skeptical as a lot of the evidence is shown on a Twitter thread compiled with screenshots. It's not that hard to fake screenshots, just so you know. But basically, the thread explained how cameraman who was working with Nikki had caught attention to Nikki's passport and noticed that it had the letter M on it. The cameraman then shared this information with Giami, and Giami allegedly shared that information with a group of others who are unknown. Now, as said before, Nikki mentioned that the blackmailer was a guy, so Giami is off the table for being the blackmailer. Jeffree Star also just doesn't seem to fit the picture, and nor does Lisa either. At the end of the day, if people want to be a little suspicious of others, that's fine. Nothing wrong with second guessing somebody's integrity or intentions, but it's also important to remember if you're going to attempt to double down on that suspicion that you provide some form of solid evidence. People's reputations and most importantly, social lives were at a risk factor with this. Justice for Nikki is great. As she said in her video though, she prefers to be the one to hammer down on the person herself. In a rather more cynical way, might I add. But after all of the responses these last couple of weeks, and literally being worldwide news, I know now that that comes with the greatest responsibility I've ever had in my life. I know this is gonna sound so stupid and weird, but with this platform we have right here, I have the power to destroy a life. I have the ability to not only destroy the life of my blackmailer, but also the life of his family, his kids his friends, his surroundings. And ever since finding out the name, the true name of my blackmailer, that has been going on in my mind. If I out this person, am I gonna be doing the same as this person did to me? Do I want that? Do I need that? Do I want to put a human being in that same situation that I was in? I just mentioned earlier that I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. Nobody in this world deserves to get blackmailed or to get pushed or pressured into coming out. Nobody should get away with blackmailing. But when I look at my situation of my life and everything that happened to me, that person has been punished. I don't wanna lower myself to his level. No, I am creating my own level. I am better than that. I think in a way they already got their punishment. They now know that I know exactly who it is. And I think they're gonna have a little bit of that fear that one day maybe their name is gonna leak to the press and they're gonna feel exactly the same thing as I was feeling. But I think it is my right to determine if I want that name to come out or not. A question I want to answer is, why would Nikki or someone in her position be anxious or scared even for this information to come out? Despite her already answering this to an extent, that being because she was scared of losing the trust of her fans, I want to delve a little bit deeper. Now while Nikki might have not felt or feared what I'm describing entirely, I still think it's good to inculate people who might be a bit perplexed as to why someone in her shoes would be scared. So when it comes to somebody coming out, you have to take into two factors, as to what would push them back from disclosing any and raw information of how they really feel. Those being the environment that they grew up in and their own perception of themselves, which all starts with the environment. If for example, they grew up in a community where everybody looked down on those who are LGBTQ+, an individual who's in said community could begin to either believe that it is wrong and start to agree with those in the community, which would eventually lead to damaging their own perception of themselves. But that's just one effect of many others, and probably in my opinion, the most harmful one in the long run. This is because most of the time, a person might suppress how they feel, and that could have a large impact on their mental health. Suppression of emotion can be okay in the short term, but can indefinitely cause more damage over time the longer it's pushed aside. Another problem is the fear of others' views on you after coming out. Social status is one of the most important things to us. We're very sociable creatures, and we value the opinions of 
others. Well, for most people, just the opinions that are about ourselves, mainly just positive ones. Negative opinions towards something can push a person back from having a positive opinion on that same topic because that person most likely wants to be likable in the environment that they're in. A good example would be if I went up to my straight friend who's male and said I'm gay and he decided to push back from the friendship because he would start to think that I'm sexually attracted to him. And I wouldn't be of course, but that's just an assumption he ran to and in his eyes makes him uncomfortable. Which even though as an example is something that's actually happened to me. I then told him that I was just joking around though to remove the tension between him and I. We're not friends anymore, but it's that change in perception that can hold people back from coming out. In that instance, I lied to not even make myself look likable, but out of guilt because I've made someone uncomfortable with my sexuality. So how does this relate? to Nikki. Well, while she might have not faced the same problems, some of the same principles can still be applied. As she said, she was afraid of losing the trust of her fans. That has to do with social status. Whether it be the fans who were against her being trans or fans that felt lied to, she was afraid of the backlash and the possible harm that could have been thrown at her reputation. It was that social pressure from not even the environment she was in, but the pressure from being a public figure that was holding her back. That is why this is a large issue with her being blackmailed. It's important for someone to face those fears willingly and not forcefully. The idea of weaponizing someone's sexuality is a very real thing as shown by the setbacks earlier. And this is why so many people were outraged when they found out she was being blackmailed for it. But hey, that brings us to the end of this video. I wanted to make this video for a few reasons. One reason because I felt like it brought a few lessons with it along the way, being how quick we are to point fingers at people. Just because they look a little suspicious, another being some of the reasons, and in my opinion from personal experience, the larger reasons as to why someone might have a hard time coming out. And overall, the fact that Nikki Tutorials is amazing at what she does. Okay, well that wasn't entirely talked about in this video, I just wanted to slide that in. She's good at what she does, okay? But I wanted to end off this video mainly saying thank you to everyone for this year. I don't know if I'll be uploading before the end of 2020 again after this video. There will definitely be future uploads just probably in the upcoming year. So I just want to thank everyone for the amazing year that I had. My channel has only been around for 8 months and it's garnered over almost 2 million views and I'm almost at 25,000 subscribers. So that's just amazing to me. Um, hopefully I'll grow more in the upcoming year. It's amazing. I love you all. Um, this video had a lot of personal experience attached to it in a way. More, more just in like the ending it part, mainly because, you know, the fears and the anxiety that comes with coming out, I can relate to on multiple different levels. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next one. Okay, bye.